This is part two of my video about Damien Hirst's new show, Treasures of the Wreck of the Unbelievable. Uh, part one was scripted. This one I'm just doing off the cuff because I find that when I read my own writing, which is rather academic, I end up sounding really pretentious and perhaps arrogant, opinionated. And I almost took my video down and my written post because I felt it sounded a little combative or uh, negative, which I don't really want to be. That's, uh, I'm not like one of the stuckists who's railing against all conceptual art and angry at the world and believe that only homespun paint daubing is real art. That's not where I come from. I think I have a more forward-looking, progressive position on art. Anyways, let's take a look at some of these great comments I got, which you might have already had the chance to read here. Yeah, I got some good comments, some people, somebody I concur wholeheartedly, someone else bringing up some other issues about branding and stuff. Uh, this is Ken Davis and uh, Braden. It's not Brandon. Braden Skelton have some interesting things, things to say. You're an idiot. What a foolish bore you are. In the end, it's the work that matters. These sort of comments, you know, you can kind of consider the source. If I want to contest someone's position on art theory, contemporary art, I'm going to challenge them to a debate. Maybe not formally, but I'll throw out a good argument. I'm not going to be like, you're an idiot. You're butthurt. There's some interesting comments on my art as well. Um, your work speaks for itself. Beyond Comic-Con and cartoon art, your arguments are negated. I guess my arguments belong to Comic-Con and cartoon art. It's an interesting criticism of my art I've gotten from a couple hostile, I'll just call them people for now, about my art, comparing it to cartoons, which I, I just don't see that at all. You can go to my website and look at my art easily. Here it is, Art and Criticism by Eric Wayne, New Art. Now this one's rather sci-fi, a header. Maybe you got things uh, like this. Uh, here's Vincent van Gogh with the bleeding ear. Self-portrait in his style. Uh, this is my kind of home-brewed... Uh-oh, I use that word. I accuse the stuck as stuff. Uh, digital impasto. There's that one again. Another one. This is not really cartoons or Comic-Con, is it? Something different. Here you can see this awareness of... Uh, Francis Bacon in this figure. There's all sorts of clever things going on with how this is presented. And that's uh, digital impasto. This is very surrealistic. This one's kind of sci-fi surrealism. I've never seen anything else that quite looks like this. Oh, this one's uh, really surrealistic, a bit trippy. Uh, now we're getting into some that Damien Hirst might want to make sculptures from. So my art, I'm not a one-trick pony. I do all sorts of things. Crucified aliens, one of my specialties. This piece is 12 feet wide. These are some of my more ambitious pieces. Some of them take a month for me to do. Right now I'm working on a series that is much quicker images, taking about three days. Anyways, back to this. Uh, I do film my original video, which you can see here and here. If you do a search for Damien Hurst Treasure, it comes up pretty quick. It's one of the first ones, 273 views only. I f felt it was a little combative and I wanted to do a bit of a codicil. I almost, like I said, I almost took it down. Uh, here's my original post on my blog. Hurst's new mega show, Vacuous Bobbles of By and For the Morbidly Wealthy. Morbidly Wealthy. It's like a disease. Yeah, that's a little harsh, isn't it? So I felt I was being too hard. I don't want it to be a hit piece. So I wrote this codicil, which you can read. Uh, I'll just breeze over it so I don't end up reading myself too much. Was that too harsh and hyperbolic? Yeah, probably. I'm not covering the other side, and I'm giving just one side of the argument here. Sorry about that. I got spun up in my own narrative and missed the big picture. This is something I'm just really aware of lately, how people are believers. We believe ideas and stories spun in language and narratives. And I'm aware when I'm doing that. This wasn't done self 
without self-awareness. I see the other side. I do. An artist has the opportunity to do absolutely whatever he wants with as much money as he wants and as many and as great of assistance as he needs. He comes up with this blockbuster of a show. And if you didn't know better and had amnesia and just stumbled into the exhibit, you'd probably like it. What the F is wrong with submerged figures with coral growing over them? It's all pretty cool. So that really is the other stance. I mean, you get the... Some people, I think, believe that Damien Hirst has some really deep, theoretical, philosophical underpinnings that someone like me just cannot fathom. Uh, if I can't fathom it, we're in deep shit. But just under my video is <laughs> an interview with him, which should take precedence. And let's see how deep he really is. The story of the collector from 2000 years ago, I spent so much time on it that it's not a lie. It's like, you know, I you persuaded yeah, yourself. Well, not even persuaded myself. I just believe it. It's like, and I think you have to believe it. There is, there is something sort of balmy about believing a story that you've actually invented yourself. Yeah, but it's like, in, you know, it's like, you, do, you know, people believe in Santa Claus. They believe, I believe in... Yeah, but those are the differences. Those are other people's stories. Yeah, but if I close my eyes, I can see this guy. Are you telling me that's not real? There you have it, folks. I mean, shit. <laughs> He's talking about whether to believe this is real or not. I mean, this is... Okay, it, it's just ridiculous, but what he's arguing is the equivalent of saying, you know, I had a dream, and the dream is well, real. Yes, you really experienced the dream that's incontestable, and that is an aspect of reality. But no, the dream is not quotidian reality. I didn't really go to a supermarket and buy my food from a cow, but I really did dream it. So this is the level he's talking about this. Um, there are a couple new points I wanted to bring up. Yeah, I thought it was being a little harsh. I try not to be like the people that are like, this is not even art, or uh, there's another blogger who says that Warhol and Coons and Hearst and all the, and Duchamp are literally morons or stupid. I don't agree with that at all. But I do have a couple more points I want to bring up, and one is this transition he's made and Koons has, Koons has made. Initially, people like Duchamp and Koons and others would present some plebeian object and put it into the museum and say, this is art. And we rethink how we consider what art is. But here, they're trying to make fine art objects by paying someone to do it. And there's a problem with this. It doesn't really work. Here, you can watch this. It doesn't work because it's the equivalent of, of hiring studio musicians to make a song. And that song is not going to be as good as a song by real musicians who wrote their own song. It reflects their vision, their pas passion, the era they live in and all that. I mean, this is like, it's like comparing uh, vintage Led Zeppelin with Britney Spears where it's, you know, orchestrated and the performer is just kind of a, a cut-out figure. So here the artists are just hired to produce this. So these pieces really are second-rate sculptors. They don't deal with things like abstraction at all or interpretation. It's really just a straightforward, naturalistic depiction using materials. Like I, I guess he's probably using bronze and gold and who knows what else. He's going to use... Jade, maybe, the best materials he can get. And there's this idea here that he's bested not only uh, real artifacts, which would be like the best art and artifacts that had kind of surfaced in a society over generations, hundreds or thousands of years. He's going to best that. But he's also going to best individual artists who make their own sculptures, who might spend years or months or whatever crafting some sculpture and need the skills to do the final touches like you might see in this, to be able to do that. He's going to best them by paying someone to do it, or a group of people to do it. And this idea, I think, is fallacious. I don't think it works. I think that's why his pieces are impressive at first, but they're ultimately lackluster. Look at this. This is um, Yolandi. Brilliant. I guess that was, you know, showing he's contemporary. Kind of like uh, when... Um, uh, Prince, Richard Prince, does Instagram photos. These guys, this, they are not the cutting edge. This appropriation stuff is old news. 
I studied this 25 years ago in art school. I did appropriation work. It's old. I think it's more interesting now to make your own work and your own vision with limited means. I think what I do is more interesting to tell the truth. It's more challenging. What can you do visually by yourself? Which would, with, you know, and it's, there's more competition. The materials I use right now because of my background, you know, I live in Southeast Asia where I can live cheap and work dirt cheap. I can't really ship my work. I can't do giant works. So I use my computer skills and my traditional drawing and painting skills. Uh, just, you know, if you're just using Photoshop and your imagination, you've got to compete with, I don't know, how many millions of people have Photoshop? You don't even need, I don't have the new one, the CC, I can't afford to pay a monthly subscription. I've got a $10 version I got in Southeast Asia. It's all I could get. So just about anyone can, you know, do that. But are they going to come up with like this 50s War of the Worlds alien and put him in a new environment holding a homunculus? That takes a little bit. I think it takes skill and a bit of imagination and so on that not everyone has. But everyone can compete at the game I'm doing, just about. You know, some people might not be able to get their hands on Photoshop. You can download it from uh, Pirate Bay or Kick-Ass Torrents for free if you want. I'll learn it. You can, get, you can watch videos on YouTube for free, and you can compete with me. These are some of the things I've done. This one. That's pretty effing weird. So is this one. These two, when I was in that mode. Now this guy looks a little bit like me. Anyways, I, I wasn't going to promote my work. This thing's my painterly style. This is a bit different. So here I'm doing something new with medium and imagery and my imagination. That's a problem with um, kind of conceptual appropriation work. Sure, we can look at a urinal in a new way, look at his art, and for some people that's new, but it isn't actually producing something I haven't seen before to look at. And if I like looking at new imagery, I get nothing. And I get nothing from the Hearst show, really, because the style is kind of a commercial Hollywood prop style. So if I want to look at new images, I'm going to get absolutely nothing. It's like if you want to hear new songs. Let's say you're, you're heavily into rock like me. You want to hear some new songs. And the idea of the day is, look, I have this buzzer. Music is what I say it is, and this buzzer is what I say music is. And this is the radical thing of the day. Well, it doesn't give me anything to listen to, and Damien Hirst doesn't give me anything to look at. So that's an issue I have with his work, that these sculptures are not as good as individual sculpt sculptures produced by artists who are good at sculpture, because they have a relationship with a medium. He doesn't. He's just relying on a commercial production. So, but I don't want to be too hard on it because I do realize that this kind of spectacle is all right. And had I wandered in it with amnesia, I probably probably would have been like, this is pretty cool. And as I said in my codicil, I prefer this to uh, Jeff Koons any day. His, his stuff kills me. I mean... It's bad as ironic kitsch, but he comes off saying it's unironic. So it's just, you know, a smorgasbord of cotton candy and super sugared snicker bars and things. I can't take it. I really prefer Hearst. And for what it is, I guess it's pretty good and it's not that bad. But I am thinking about it costs $50 million. I can't do the math in my head. If you took... 50 million and divided by 189 for 189 uh, pieces, sculptures, gave 189 people 189th of that 50 million dollars and had them each produce a sculpture, I guarantee you'd get a much better show. So there's this extreme conceptual art, moneyed work, hired artisans. It's really... You know, I'm really the antith antithesis of this, making my own work for nothing. You can compare my Sphinx versus her Sphinx if you want. Mine's worth absolutely nothing. His is worth probably 
I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more. So, <clears throat> if you want to check out my new series, by the, I just produced a piece last night, so we can go see that. You know, go to my webpage. It's a lot of fun. Come on, Internet. This is uh, Internet in Cambodia. Encephalopedia. This is a new piece. Hey, it's got an underwater theme. There's like this kind of encephalopod, in this body here. I like the background in that it's at night. I'm trying to suggest things without the tedium of rendering every little detail, which, you know, I'll agree with Hearst on that. I don't want to be rendering every little detail. But he hires people, and he uses that aesthetic. He's got the aesthetic of chiseling out every little scale on the serpent's tentacle. Not me. I suggest it. That's good enough. You know, it's the imagination. It's the vision that I want. It's something a little bit intangible. And that something is missing from his show, I think. So if you want to see my new series, you could art, new series, imagine that. There's 25 of them so far. I didn't mean to plug myself. When I go off the cuff, that sort of thing happens. Sorry about that. Uh, that's all. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, I think I was too hard on Damien. <laughs>